If you've clicked on this video, you're probably wondering what's different about an interactive online malware sandbox and how does it benefit you, especially compared to an automatic service? To answer that question, we need to understand that there's a core difference in how these tools work and therefore how and when they're used. An automatic sandbox allows you to upload files or submit URLs for analysis within a virtual environment. Here, the content is executed in isolation, thoroughly examined, and the findings are compiled into a final report. But this process takes place behind the scenes. As a user, you don't have the ability to dictate, manipulate, or view the sandbox activities during execution. You simply get the result without much insight into the process. And in some cases, that's all you need. It's perfectly valid. In fact, it's an absolutely necessary tool in your toolbox. It's fast and it lets you analyze files in bulk. But what happens when adversaries get crafty? We have been tracking a pattern that has become very popular in phishing campaigns, which confuses automatic sandboxes. Hackers distribute an email containing a download link for a password protected archive. The password is provided in the email's body. Once the user enters this password, an executable is dropped. This sequence of steps is very easy for a human to follow, but it's an automation nightmare. Find an image which is actually a link, download a file from that link, open it, find the password in the email, use that password. It's not easy to set this up in a SOAR system. To analyze this campaign and securely retrace the steps, you need a controlled environment, such as a virtual machine. This allows you to safely navigate through the process. You see where this is leading, right? Let's analyze an email like that in any run. Look at the task setup screen. There's a noticeable contrast with an automatic sandbox. We now have configuration choices for network settings, operating systems, and detailed control over the environment. We'll skip the deep dive for now. If you're interested in a detailed walkthrough of task setup, drop us a comment and we will create a video on it. After clicking Run Task, you'll see the VM start up. An interactive sandbox allows you to monitor it in real time. We're aware we're handling a phishing email, yet currently there's no indication of malicious activity. No red flags are popping up. That's because there's no way for Sandbox to know that we're dealing with something nefarious. Unless, maybe, the sender's address is flagged in a database associated with malicious operations and whatnot. And that's where the analysis in Automatic Sandbox would conclude. The email tells us to download a PDF attachment and later extract its content using the provided password 7410, which we'll need to remember. Let's go ahead and do that then. Open the file and let's extract the contents to the desktop, though we can do anything with it, really. Now it will request the password, which, as you can recall, was 7410, and we'll proceed as the attacker expects us to. Currently, I'm typing it on my physical keyboard as if I'm using a real machine, but in reality, I'm remotely controlling a virtual machine using a VNC protocol. This is really cool. After the extraction completes, we can close all these windows. We won't need them anymore. We've extracted the payload, but you'll notice there are still no signs of malicious activity, in the process tree, at least. That's because there's one more step. We need to detonate the payload by interacting with the executable. So let's click on the new file. It's this one here, and we're going to wait for any run to detect and record malware activity. And as you can see here, we've detected a Remcos rat, a widely prevalent and destructive keylogger, this. Clicking on the process reveals more information about it, showing how it was detected and what actions the process is attempting, including its meter TTPS. At this point, we can stop the task, which will bring us to the recorded task screen. This is where all the reports are generated. Just like automatic sandboxes, interactive sandboxes provide final reports, and in any run, they happen to be very powerful. We automatically receive a full configuration decrypted and extracted from memory dumps, giving us access to all these strings. 
This currently works for 50 plus malware families. We get IOCs, so you can swiftly integrate them into your SIEM or SOAR system, which is particularly valuable for quickly pulling IOCs from very new malware, since that's the kind that most often slips past automatic detection. Though, do watch out for false positives. Or you can download the sample and analyze it statically with your own tools if you need to do a deeper investigation, reverse engineer it manually, or click on process details to open a view that offers extensive information about the process, including a breakdown by individual events. Each event has filtered and raw views, which is handy for tracing the execution step by step. In a nutshell, that's how you use AnyRun to analyze malware when automatic sandboxes might not catch it. It's ideal for looking into evasive or new samples and intricate phishing campaigns with multiple steps in the infection chain. Any case that calls for an in-depth investigation. We're not trying to downplay automatic sandboxes. They have their place for batch processing and automation. They're just a different tool and not the right one for these particular use cases. That wraps it up. That's AnyRun Interactivity. What do you think of this video? Leave a comment. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.